Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Let me thank uh, Dominic for inviting me to be here. It's really a great pleasure to be with all of you and to, to talk about uh, these uh, potential new methods in, 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 in evaluation. Um, my presentation is going to be very much connected to the previous one. It's more a personal reflection and trying to, to, to assess potential advantages, risk, okay, of using generative AA or similar, similar tools. But, uh, well, I hope that this is, um, I mean, it's good to, for the discussion that we will have later. And I have um, organized um, the presentation first to tell you, yes, a second, the basis of ERC, though probably most of you know what the ERC is. Then a brief description on the evaluation process because this will help me to, to go into the core of what I want to, to share with you today. That is these personal reflections on the use of uh, artificial intelligence by funders, by many of us. And also I will uh, share with you the current position of uh, ERC on the use of uh, artificial intelligence. So um, let me start just with the basics. Okay, so ERC is uh, part of uh, the Horizon Europe uh, framework program. This, as you know, is a multi-annual, seven years long uh, program for research and innovation, around 1,000 um, sorry, 100,000 million of uh, the budget for these seven years. And uh, ERC is part of it in the so-called Pillar 1 together with other programs that probably you know well, like the Maria Slovenska Curie Actions and the infrastructures. Our budget for this year is around 16 billion. It's a bit more because after the association of UK, this is going to increase around 19 billion for the, for the seven-year period. Uh, and um, the rationale behind the ERC is very, very concrete in the, in the legislation. Here I'm quoting what is in the legislation. So it's a program to, uh, attract, uh, to provide attracted and flexible funding, okay, um, to enable talented and creative individual researchers, and also with an emphasis in, in, in the young researchers uh, or early stage researchers, around two thirds of our PIs are uh, early stage researchers. By early stage researchers, we mean between two and 12 years after the PhD. And um, through a, a broad competition across uh, all um, countries of the European Union, plus all the associated countries to, to the program. And the area of intervention is from TR research. Why, why ERC has chosen this term to, to not basic, not fundamental? Uh, well, from TR research is a broad concept uh, that is not really well defined in the in the legislation because, uh, but basically tries to accommodate basic as well as applied research. Okay, it's not a program only for basic research; it's broader. Okay, and we fund a lot of applied research too. And two important features: one is, as was mentioned later, the only criterion of excellence that it characterizes ERC. And it's important to remark this. Sometimes this looks obvious, but not in the context of the European Union and their programs in the, by the Commission, to where they are typically for the rest of the programs in Horizon Europe, other, other criteria that have to be used, like uh, the socioeconomic impact of the project and so on and so forth. And the other feature is that it's bottom up. Okay, So we cover all the areas of knowledge without establishing any priorities. Okay, So all the areas are equally fundable and with the same chances to be to be funded. So these are just the, the main features, the evaluation process. So um, the evaluation process has to apply this only criterion that is excellence and also has to um, take into account this emphasis on the early stage career researchers. Okay, So the program is basically is divided in four main funding schemes that are here, starting consolidators and funds, but basically are the same schemes, but focusing on different different career stages. And then we have this additional funding scheme, synergy grants, that is for groups of principal investigators to try to cover or to fund some projects that with at the individual level, they are, they are hard to carry out and they need two, three, or four principal investigators. Proof of concept is a top up a grant for the the, the PAs that they have other grants, but I will not discuss that. What I want to to to, to the emphasis is an excellence as the the, the sole evaluation criterion, and 
excellence is um, seen as the excellence of the research project and the excellence of the principal investigator. Uh, and there you have the three features associated to, to, to each of these uh, uh, elements for, 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 for excellence. Let me tell you, and but this will be a, a, full, a full conference, but I'm not going to get into it, that ERC has done a reflection that has been implemented in World Program 2024, the current one, to um, elaborate more on the how uh, the excellence criterion is is uh, used by the evaluators by the the the, the uh, researchers that they are doing the assessment, doing uh, more emphasis on following the responsible research assessment uh, exercise, but not uh, driven by us, driven by the by the, the members of the ERC scientific council, to make it more inclusive. Okay. So this is, as I said, something that will require um, a, a different session to talk about these changes. But the message here is that now, okay, in this shift, in these changes in 24, is, is more important, okay, in this assessment of excellence, the excellence of the project of the research proposal, the research that you're going to be doing as a PI, than the principal investigator. The assessment of the principal investigator is most to assess if the credentials or the experience that uh, is shown in the, in, the, in the application are good enough to carry out the research that uh, the, the, the PI is proposing. Okay? So this has changed a bit the focus that in the past were more 50-50, now is more, the emphasis is more on the, on the research project. That's an important change. But okay, here we are talking about new methods. I'm not going to, to get into, into, into that. But let me see that um, there are two key elements that determine how we do the evaluation. First, in ERC, well, we had the privilege to be able to, to, to have um, evaluators from anywhere in the world, and we try to, to invite the top researchers from all the areas. And also, we have this feature, I mean, shared by other, other, other funders, that the applicants are interviewed. Okay, there's an interview in the in the in the selection process. Well, this automatically implies that you have a very strong constraint. Okay, you cannot have five people, sorry, the top uh, scientists evaluating researchers for more than five days. They will never serve uh, for you if you impose much. So we have a limitation in time in the capacity of these people to serve as evaluators. And this constrains the whole system because then we need a filtering process. We need at least the, the step to filter. So in the interview, we have we have only a few, similar to I mean, the processes that we have seen in the previous presentation. And uh, again, this implies a multi-step process. So how is the evaluation done? Before going into the steps, let me tell you a bit about the, the proposal because this is relevant for this. Um, we asked for the scientific proposal but since we are going to have a filtering process, we ask also for what is called the standard synopsis, something that is evaluated in the, in, the, in the first step only. Why? Because what we do in the first step is an assessment at the level of the panels. And again, you cannot ask these this, this, this top researchers to spend too much time uh, doing that because they will not do the job for you. So we ask for a reduced version, okay, of the proposal that this is standard synopsis. So how, well, and also we organize the, 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 the evaluation through panels covering all knowledge. This is just a way to cover, to orientate, and to also for us to organize the, the, the evaluation process. And this is an evolving picture. This is not, let's say, always fixed. We started with 20, then 25, 27, and now we are in, in 28. That is, this is the current, the current structure. So we have panels, panels where we have all these reviews. We have more or less every year around 1,000, 1,100 panel members in the different, I mean, covering the, the different funding schemes. So how is the evaluation? The evaluation has, as I said, two steps. This is the case of uh, starting for editorial advance. Synergy has three steps. It's a bit more complicated, but, well, but maybe but the message I want to convey is basically the same. So in the first step, this is an assessment at the level of the panel members. We don't ask external people or to have many reviews for all of them, okay? We just tell the panels, looking only at the synopsis and the, the CV and track record of the applicant, 
to do a first assessment, okay, and this they do individual reviews, the panel members, each panel members can assess sometimes 20, sometimes more, uh, 30, 30 reviews. This is a lot of work, okay? That's the reason why we, we have this uh, synopsis, so they don't have to read the, the full process at this stage. And they meet and they decided which ones will go to the, to the step two. We have two scores, okay, uh, for the ones rejected. B and C, C are the ones that are very weak, okay? Uh, B is the ones that, well, they have some positive elements and, uh, and, but not enough to, to, to go to a step two. It will be very interesting, okay, to, to, to an exercise like the, like the one that uh, was presented to see, uh, at least a pilot to see, if we are able to predict the C's as good as you are predicting the, the, the weak ones. It's, uh, it would be very interesting and we can talk about that possibility. And um, then the ones that go to, to step two, okay, are um, then, and this is very important. I mean, as you can imagine in a panel, we have 15, 17 people, so they don't um, cover completely all the knowledge in depth that is needed to assess the, the, all the proposals, or there is one that is covering this, but not the rest. So we need additional information from experts, okay, that are really experts on the on the content of the proposal to continue with the assessment. And this is done through what we call remote reviewers. So between step one and step two, the panels identify reviewers, I mean, typically like 10, 12 per proposal, because we have uh, uh, the success rate in, in these people reviewing for us that is around one third, 30%. And all these uh, reviews are uh, incorporated in the discussion of the panel that finally meets, discuss, and also interview the, uh, the, the, the applicants. And finally, they take a decision and the possible scores are A, that is fundable, B, that well, it was not good enough to, to, to be fundable. And among these, unfortunately, we cannot fund all of them because this depends on the, on the resources we have. And typically, we fund um, more or less a bit, a bit like 60% of the, 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 the ones that uh, get an A. And so we have a lot of, uh, let's say, proposals that are always very high quality that pass all the, the, the excellence uh, approach uh, assessment, but we are not able to fund. Okay, so this is the picture of the of the evaluation process that uh, we we do, and then in in the before, I will talk to you about the procedure of ERC, the current one on AA, but then I will go to personal reflections on where these methods that based on generative AA could be used in the process. Okay, to 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 uh, improve the, the way we do the evaluation looking at some risks, advantages, and so on. So what is the position? Basically, the position of ERC, the current one that is public in, in, in our website, is that, um, well, it's a message for the applicants, okay? And we are telling the applicants, okay, you can use whatever you want to prepare your proposal, your colleagues, your friends, your neighbor, the, the, any generative AI system, whatever you want, okay? but you are the responsible of what you write in the proposal, okay? That's basically the message. And we are not going to ask if you have been using it or not, basically because we don't really know what to do with that information. So this is the message, okay? You are the ultimate responsible of what is in the proposal. If for some reason you use a mechanism, you are copying the ideas of others, you are responsible. You cannot give that responsibility to somebody else. It's you. Okay? So that's basically the position. And um, internally, in the ERC, um, some members of the Scientific Council, together with uh, the support of the ERC Executive Agency, are following developments, are following inquiries that we have from applicants and inquiries that we have also from reviewers. And we are, let's say, um, in a case building approach to take um, more decisions if needed in the future. Okay? So then the next are personal reflections. Okay, and I have a clear disclaimer. This is not the position of the ERC at all. Okay. This is more the the the, the outcome of brainstorming discussions in among the 
the people in my unit. My unit, the unit I work, is the unit that provides support the scientific council and is the policy unit in the ERC executive agency of the ERC. So I will focus on applicants, reviewers, identification of reviewers, and panel configurations. And many of these ideas, they have a clear overlap with uh, the activities that, that were presented before. <coughs> Let me start with the applicant. Well, no, before starting with, <laughs> with uh, all these groups, let me share with you three remarks, okay? I mean, all this is very personal. As I tell you, or uh, the, the result of brainstorming discussions in, among, among the colleagues in my unit. So um, first, all the A-based systems referred in, in, in what I be discussing are private. What I mean by private means that they are not uh, let's say, in a cloud domain that uh, like uh, ChatGPT or others. They are ad hoc systems built for the exclusive use of the funders, okay? Because confidentiality is essential in the whole process. So whatever system we could use for this, it has to be private, as probably this is the case in, in the work you, you presented. Then I will present some advantages, some risks, okay? As I say, uh, very personal, but Okay, in any discussion on the use of generative AI or others, the word unimaginable is always present. So what I'm saying is not complete at all. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure there are many risks that I am not, or we are not at this moment able to see, and there are advantages that also we are not able to see. And um, well, uh, by a based system that is that I'm not initiating, I mean now generative AI, but could be some other system that probably now they are. Unimaginable. Okay, so let's start now with applicants. Okay, the first question that I ask myself is: Should funders create an AV system to support applicants in drafting their proposals? Okay. Well, um, the the applications of AI in proposal preparation, I think, could serve to create a more level playing field across applicants with different exposures to AI. I don't know what is the situation here in the, in the Spanish agency. But in, in, in the ERC, we see a very, very broad level of quality in the proposals, depending on the origin of these proposals. Typically, proposals coming from what are qualified as widening participation countries. In average, they are weaker than the others, but weaker in many sense, in the sense they are structured, in the sense they are adapted. Okay, sometimes the ideas behind are extremely good, but they are not, they are not presented with the, with the right quality. So um, to have a more level playing field, I think it's important for, for, for funders, okay, to give equal opportunities to all the principal investigators. And is, before talking about the advantages and the risks, let me, let me talk about the risk of not doing so. The risk is that organizations will create their own systems. If you see, the plans of the use of artificial intelligence in many universities in the United States, okay? All of them, they mentioned that they will create their own system to improve their applications to NSF and NIH. And in fact, many of them, they do a cost-benefit analysis. I mean, if an improvement of 10% in the quality of our proposal would be such as amount of money and that we are going to spend, I mean, they are doing it. Everyone is doing it, okay? So the question is, Okay, the, the uh, uh, universities or uh, uh, research institutes that they are more in the, let's say, um, exposed to, 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 to the use of AI will have an advantage as compared to others. And um, we will have, again, another component for the so-called Matthew effect, that the people that they have already an advantage will have more advantages, so say. So, so, well, we funders, we could consider to create one for everybody. And we have a very, I mean, an advantage co compared to the University of Barcelona, because the University of Barcelona will have only information about the proposals that they have submitted to the different funders. But here in ERC, we have now 120,000 proposals since we started, okay? So we can train the system much better than anybody else. So doing a good job here, an intelligent uh, system based on all the information that we have, we could create the best tool 
I can be used across the board, okay? So um, it can be also customized for our specificities. Uh, it will be made available for all applicants. These are all advantages. Of course, for people that they had difficulties that in English will be a huge benefit, okay? And also even for, for us, I mean, for, for, fund, for, for, for the agency, for the ERC, they will do a quality check that they are addressing all that is required, like compliance, consistency, compression, and we will have less mistakes uh, found when we do the, the, the assessment to check eligibility, to find clerical errors. I mean, uh, so it will reduce also work for, for us because the proposals, they will be much, much clearer if the, if the, if the, if the system is, is, is uh, good enough. We lose a lot of time in ERC, I, I, I think also here in the ERC, there's a lot of uh, resource investment in checking that the, the applications, they, are, they, are, they fulfill all the, the requirements. So these are the advantages. Of course, there are some risks, okay? So maybe the, the originality of the proposals may be reduced. Maybe we end with a kind of uniform-like proposal that uh, very, very boring and, uh, uh, but, Okay, of course, this all, all depends on how good is the system that we create and how flexible. Also, proposals may incorporate ideas of other proposals. Well, we have to be very careful that the system doesn't do that. And also, well, this uh, uh, probably can be cured with a good uh, terms of use of this, uh, this tool that funders may be considered liable in case of rejection. For example, they can say, okay, I am rejected, but this is your fault, okay, because I use your tool and, and, and so on. So, there are questions here to be addressed and raised and so on, but I think the benefits could be, could be much, much bigger. So, reviewers, okay? Um, should, should we have a tool for reviewers? Well, probably there are many advantages here, okay? Um, and the quality of the reviews is an issue for many of us. The, the funders, sometimes the reviews, they are quite blunt, they don't say much, okay? And uh, sometimes they don't, they don't even address what they should be addressing, okay? And um, sometimes they use criteria that they made up, okay? They, that is not in, uh, among the criteria they have to use. So this could be uh, helpful, okay, for uh, to have a, a tool that uh, provides support to them, also pointing out what is missing or inconsistencies, or uh, for instance, if they are adding uh, or the reproducing test that is in the proposal, that is a practice that we always try to avoid, but many people do. And uh, of course, uh, avoid inappropriate comments that uh, that sometimes uh, are in the reviews. So I think it will be useful for funders reduce, reducing potential for address cases when, when some comments slip in the reviews that should not be there. And also, um, many of us, uh, we do an assessment of the, of the reviews. We do an assessment for the panel members if they are doing the job properly, okay? This is now, of course, done very manual, and we will have a system to do a quality assessment to uh, decide whether this review will be invited again or not. Okay, so this is where, of course, there are some risks here, like um, the views can can become lazy. Okay, well, the system is doing for me, so <laughs> I will not do much. Uh, but, but I'm not saying that the review, um, here I'm not proposing that review will be done by the, by the system, okay? This is another step that, that is what's, uh, like was uh, presented before, is more a support tool for the reviewer. And, well, the, the reality may be, review, may, be, may be reduced, and uh, yes, dissimilarity among them, too much politically correct using just yes, politically correct language, less, let's say, out of the, of the box uh, comments may be, may be, may be missing. Then, uh, still in reviewers, one of the tasks our panel members do, and they struggle a lot, is the so-called panel comment, okay? Panel comment means that when they discuss, they, after the interviews, they have to write uh, just a paragraph, okay? With the main, the main, I mean, portraying the main decision, why they are taking the decision, why it's an A, a B, a C, okay? And this is always time-consuming, challenging, and so on. Um, well, and here we could have also uh, help from IAT tool, at least to, to draft uh, a first uh, 
proposal for this panel comments, of course, the final decision is taken by the panel and should be, should be assessed by all of them and decided by all of them. Uh, but it will help to, to elaborate the first draft. Let me say that uh, in the European Commission now uh, they have created, uh, using GPT-4 technology, a tool that is called e-briefings, okay? And it's amazing, okay? E-briefings, I mean, for, uh, for uh, I mean, civil servants that we have to brief, okay, uh, often, okay? This is part, important part of our, our task. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you cannot believe it, okay? I mean, you put, <laughs> you put all the information in documents, uh, the, the bullet points of what you want to do, and, woof, that's, uh, and the first draft that is provided is amazing. It's extremely, extremely good. This is, I mean, now it's starting to be widely used in, in the context of, of the European Commission. So these tools can, can, be, can, be, can be produced to help. And then, I mean, um, of course, have the advantage is time saving and more equitable, maybe because it's considering all the reviews. Sometimes in this description of panel comments, you just extract something from one of the reviews, but you 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 disregard the others. So it could be more equitable. And well, of course, the disadvantage is that the discussion is not taken into account if it is from the reviews or the the the, the interviews. But I mean, thinking more in the future, okay. Also in the commission now, they are working, I mean, what another, I mean, civil servants, they do briefings and they do minutes, okay? These are the two more important tasks for, <laughs> for civil servants. Briefings now is, it, what, it's the job, yes. <laughs> so now in briefings, it, we have this tool, but they are working on the tool also for minutes, okay? That the, the meeting is recorded, okay? And you express, okay, give me the minutes, of the meeting, okay? So, so, well, we could use that here too, okay? I mean, the system could listen the interview, could uh, listen the, the, the discussion of the panel, and, well, the panel comment, okay? <laughs> and then on that, you can work, uh, okay, to, to, to have the final, the final version to be transmitted to the applicant. Okay, this is more talking about the future, but probably it's, it's, it's closer than we think. So, identification of reviews that was also mentioned, okay? This is also challenging. For instance, these remote referees that we have it in step one, step two, around 30% say no, okay? But basically the main reason to say no is that I don't fit. I mean, my expertise doesn't fit with the, 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 the content of the proposal. So, if we can improve there, okay, we will gain a lot, a lot in, in resources, a lot also in the quality. We have currently in ERC a system to do this, okay, since 2019, I think, yeah. But it's based more on a, a taxonomy approach uh, linked to the proposal, linked to the, the, the publication record of the, of, the, of the researches and so on. And it was quite well, for instance, in areas of life sciences, in areas of physical sciences. But again, here the challenge is that it doesn't work that well in humanities and part of social sciences. So maybe um, using this new technology, we could um, improve these, these, these systems to have a better way to, 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 identify, to identify these reviewers. Okay? Um, yeah, so, um, and then finally, the next one is about panel configurations. Okay. Well, you have seen our 28 panels, okay? Of course, we had to populate these panels with, with experts, okay? And, well, this is done very manually now, okay? Trying to, 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 to cover, because each panel has uh, descriptors, okay? There is a kind of taxonomy behind the panel, and we try to cover manually all, all, all these descriptors. But sometimes, well, we have, we have uh, holes here and there, so the, the, we, can, I mean, we can get help on the on that, but what is very <coughs> challenging for us also in ERC, as, as I told you, this panel structure has been evolving. What would be ideal would be to not have panels, okay? That panels are arranged dynamically when we receive the proposals, because we receive a lot of interdisciplinary proposals. Sometimes there are discussions where to, to put it, okay? There are cross panel reviews. Well, they are not really we had a feeling that the, the assessment of interdisciplinary proposals is not really completely well done, it can be improved, and um, this, this, this could help um, on, the, on this. 
We had done an attempt in ERC in 2018 to do this, also based on, on, on taxonomies, but I think now with these new technologies, we may have an opportunity. Again, when we did it in 2018, it didn't work for humanities, okay? Well, it worked well for, uh, for licenses, but, uh, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's very hard based on that because, well, basically the information that we use is in, of the researches, the, the panel members, the reviews is, databases like like scopus okay and they are i mean uh, there are some areas that are very well portrayed but there are others that they are not that well but i think with the with the, this new technology and also uh, having a more uh, let's say um, um open science system that publications they are more available okay to to be read by the, the different systems can help to improve this uh, panel configuration. So this is another another um, uh, room for uh, for use of uh, this uh, new, new methodology. Let me say, okay, that I just went very quickly through through um, advantages, risks. There may be many others. I have been looking at, uh, I mean, different approaches to 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 the use of generative AI tool, and I came with this. Uh, what is called faster principles that is uh, is in the context of I mean is the, the the Canadian government, uh, which I found very complete about uh, what are the, the the features that all these systems should have like to be fair, to to not increase the bias, just for using the system to be I mean very careful that uh, that it complies with uh, uh, human rights, accessibility, I mean fairness in general. Okay. That is accountable, okay. That uh, there is always a responsibility of all the content that is there, and that um, is compliant in the terms of very clear terms of use. Also, that is secure, okay. That confidentiality is crucial for the the work that we do, funders assessing the, the proposals, and um, transparent, okay. Yes, to 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 be clear to the applicants, to to the reviewers, to the scientific community in general that we are using the tools and um, and uh, to present the features and also how these tools are are trained and so on and so forth and also educated in the sense that uh, people need to be to be trained okay to 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 use them and relevant okay just use it for situations that are relevant but not in general okay maybe there are situations that is not effective to use some of these tools so these are as i said again very personal reflections Okay, to, to, to discuss maybe later in the in the debate. Okay, thank you. Thank you.